Okay, this is going to be quite a complex video, but I'll try to simplify it as much as possible. There is a ton of information still, so just please bear with me and you'll understand quite possibly the number one issue that's causing the randomly bad benchmarks for Ryzen and gaming, as well as what both AMD and you can do to get the most out of your processor. Stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome back to Gamer Meld. It seems the number one issue people have when it comes to Ryzen are the gaming benchmarks, specifically random games that tend to dip very low. But as many have said, the performance is still great. Of course, most of these are with a 1080, so that is a factor. But I want to make this clear early on. I really like AMD's newest platform. I truly do. Ryzen is shaking things up and AMD has done a fantastic job making a chip that's affordable and can do pretty much everything. Really, there is no but about that. I just really want to inform everyone what's going on. And what I'm about to say actually has a great side to it. There's quite a bit of improvement, though I can't 100% say how big that improvement's going to be, but the possibility is definitely there. It also brings fantastic news for those waiting on Ryzen 5, which I know people are talking about right now. So what's going on with these randomly less than expected benchmarks in gaming, even when compared to Intel's 8-core chip? The best answer comes from an article from a French hardware site called Hardware.fr. It was actually published before most people even had the chance to get a hold of their cards. I'm sorry it took me so long to find, but through researching the best RAM for Ryzen owners for an upcoming video. Which is still coming by the way, so definitely subscribe to get updated on that. But yeah, through that research I found it, and it's actually a good thing that I found it later because many questions the article couldn't answer have been answered since, as well as an update from them. To top it off, I found answers to my own questions not answered in that article. Either way. After hours of researching this issue, I'm able to give an almost definitive reason rise and fall short in seemingly random areas. If you're interested in the article, it will be linked below, and with Google Translate, you can read it yourself. It's definitely a great read. So on to the actual explanation. It's probably best to do a really fast and somewhat oversimplified explanation of the way processors interact with memory and cache for most to understand the problem. Most people understand that memory, or RAM, is the volatile storage solution essentially in between your CPU and much slower hard drive. When, for example, you start an application and your CPU takes data from your storage device and places it onto the memory to actually run the program. It's definitely more complex than that, but it gives you the idea. The thing many people don't know is that there's much faster memory the CPU can run directly off of called cache. There are three forms of cache we're going to discuss here. L1, L2, and L3. L1 is your fastest cache, but it also contains the least amount of storage from the other two. L2 is slower, but contains more, and finally the L3 cache is even slower still, but is capable of containing the most data, and is what's referred to when CPU companies sell their cache, you know, 8 megabytes, 12 megabytes, whatever it may be. The CPU actually looks for memory starting at L1 cache, moving all the way to system memory as its last option, as system memory is the slowest of the four. Now, there is actually two issues going on. One is memory latency being higher than Intel's. As a matter of fact, the ADA64 test showed Ryzen's memory at 28 nanoseconds more latency than Intel's 6900K, which is actually the chip that was used for these benchmarks. I know what you're thinking, that's not a lot. Well, when we're talking cache, it does make a difference. But why is this happening? Well, we have to talk about Ryzen's architecture a little before we get to the real problem. Ryzen has 8 cores and 16 threads. Most people know that. But what most people don't know is that it divides two sets of 4 cores into two CCXs, each with its own 8 megabytes of L3 cache, which gives you the total 16 megabytes you see advertised. To bridge the sets of cores, AMD connects them with the data fabric that uses a bus to make its way to the memory controller. As I stated earlier, when data is needed, a typical CPU simply checks its cache and then moves up through the levels until it finds it. But since the cores and cache are split up in a way, it actually has to send a request to both the memory as well as the CCX to check its cache. This ends up causing the latency in memory. 
But that actually isn't half the problem. So they next looked at the cache itself. On a side note, the ADA64 program used doesn't look at AMD's cache exactly right because they didn't have Ryzen for their latest release, but I tracked down an ADA64 update on the problems they found with their current beta that I believe Hardware.fr was using during their tests. An L1, L2, and L3 cache that it shows don't sound to be too far off in the true numbers. Either way, there's still theoretical issues involved that don't need benchmarks to discuss. Either way, as you can see, the difference in the L1 and L2 cache isn't that bad. It's the L3 cache that's insanely different. And no, we can't take these numbers by complete face value because of ADA not working properly, but keep in mind that they said it simply aren't peak. Instead, they're average. That actually tells me that the numbers shown are actually better than they really are because that isn't peak latency, which should be much higher. So now it boils down to the actual problem it has. When going through Ryzen's architecture, the L3 cache on Ryzen is what's called a victim cache. This means that any data that doesn't need to fit on the other levels of cache or unable to fit on it are dumped onto the L3. From what I understand, this is why the cache is split up, which gives each four cores its eight megabytes of L3 cache. The biggest problem comes from how Ryzen handles cache above 8 megabytes. As stated by AMD, the bandwidth between the two CCX modules is 22 gigabytes per second. L3 cache is capable of 175 gigabytes per second. So instead of transferring 100% of data with L3 cache, sometimes a core on one CCX has to call memory from another CCX, needing to pass through the much slower 22 gigabytes per second bus. It would actually be faster to just go for the system RAM, but I assume there are some use case scenarios that benefit from this. So anytime the CPU needs more than 8 megabytes of L3, it has to go over through this slower connection. This may be one reason some people were thinking the scheduler was messed up, though it definitely seemed to be something else. The scheduler is also involved in this. It is capable of seeing the different threads, but according to hardware.fr, Windows Scheduler likes to move around threads when handing out processes, and it doesn't care of the thread's location based on its cache. This makes the thread constantly looking back and forth through the bus, completely slowing down the process. So you're probably asking yourself, well, why is this affecting games so much? Well, games are actually very heavy in using cache. Not only that, but it makes sense that the other random multi-core processes AMD tends to struggle in because they heavily rely on cache. So yeah, this actually leads me to the good news. I know many of you are probably bummed at AMD, but keep in mind that I have no doubt this was a big reason they're able to keep the prices down, and really, it's not a bad design, and it's the reason all new architectures should be given time to mature. No, not all problems with Ryzen can be fixed with software, but it seems there's definitely a ton of improvements to be had. For one, it seems like Microsoft is working with AMD to help get the scheduler to not move around too much. Then, of course, is for games to be developed more with this in mind. Almost no games out now have even known about Ryzen throughout their development. The third one is based on some speculation given this information, but it makes sense. AMD got to that 22 gigabytes based on the transfer speeds of the bus and the memory frequency. As you can see, the bus is capable of 32 bytes per cycle. They were running DDR4-2400. Really quickly, a lot of people think 2400 is the frequency. You actually have to cut that in half. The frequency is at 1200 megahertz. This gave the theoretical number of 38 gigabytes per second. So why is AMD only stating 22? Well, because other things have to be transmitted on that same bus. So they have to leave room for other processes. But what's your point? I know. I'm getting there. Many of you may have seen that reviewers are noting much higher FPS with Ryzen the more you go up in RAM frequency, at least much more of a difference than you would see on, say, Intel's processors. That's because the higher the RAM, the higher that 22 gigabytes per second goes and clears up more of the bottleneck. Now, that's mostly my speculation, but I could be wrong. And AMD may actually have a cap on the 22 gigabytes rather than simply requiring a certain amount over it. Well, that concludes all of this. I really hope it wasn't too technical, and I laid it out in a way that everyone understands. I definitely worked hard on the information, but Hardware.fr deserves some serious love. 
And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I'll try to get to them. Oh, and please check me out on if you have any questions, anything like that, just kind of more of a less formal way than in the comments. I would definitely love to get to know my audience. And as always, have a great day.